So hello, folks. I am back again with a few more book reviews. I said I wasn't going to do anything more today, but I am. And you may notice there's a kitten sitting on me. Charlie is making his first World War II TV appearance. But we're talking about the French Resistance um, because it's an area that I live in France, obviously. I'm interested in the French Resistance. The sad thing is a lot of the best books about the French Resistance are only in French language and have not yet been translated into English. But here are a few books that I recommend about the French Resistance. Um, that I'll go through one at a time. So um, uh, if you want to have just one book and kind of get to grips with the different types of organizations, because there were communist resistance and de Gaulle's resistance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a really good starting point is Matthew Cobb's book, The Resistance, The French Fight Against the Nazis. And he came onto World War II TV a couple of years ago and broke down the various organizations and how they eventually pretty much unified under one um, heading to, to try and defeat the German, uh, Germans. But it starts off with the fact there was a railways resistance so member, made up of members of the SNCF or the railways uh, uh, company. There were resistance units, parts of post office. There were uh, resistance and Mackey units in the mountains. There were political units. There were kind of units formed of 1940 French veterans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, there we are. This is my first sort of go-to standard It'll explain who the various factions are, how the fights uh, and, and campaigns are waged, but, um, and particularly about the French aspect rather than necessarily the SOE, sort of special operations executive aspect, although it does get a mention, of course, because you can't kind of separate the two subjects. That's my first book, Matthew Cobb, The Resistance, The French Fight Against the Nazis. My next book, uh, and he's also been on the channel, is by Dr. Chris Millington, and it is France. In the Second World War, Collaboration, Resistance, Holocaust, Empire. So it's not exclusively about the resistance. It's more of an academic book. And it's about how France um, reacted to the German invasion, how different people in different societies um, got on with their lives or tried to, to resist. And it, it brings up that subject that I've talked about very frequently, which is what is resistance? What is collaboration? What is um, defines. It talks about some of the uh, the countries around the world that had uh, that were, were governed by France and how they reacted as well. So it's a it's an it's an academic study. Dr. Millington, you know, teaches history, but I found it really interesting. It raised some really um, fascinating questions to me about again how we put these labels on things of resistance and 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 you know. And Chris is a massive fan of France. He's a francophile, not a francophobe, and it's a I found it a really informative read about how France, you know, um, got on with itself in a sense during the occupation. So that's my second book. Third book, one of the figures that looms large in French resistance history, historiography, reputation, myth, legend is Jean Moulin. So Jean Moulin was a pre-war French prefet, so kind of a regional gov uh, government government who was the guy who was trying to unify the French under one heading. He'd been to London back and forth. He, he, he you know, had been in meetings with the Gaulle and the French government in exile. And he was famously, infamously um, uh, captured by um, Klaus Barbie in Lyon at a house with other members of the resistance. And um, this is where the fact that some of the books about the resistance written by French authors are not in English is interesting because I went to Lyon five or six years ago with a group of French friends, including Mag, and we had a presentation in the house where Moulin was 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 picked up by the SS and uh, the Gestapo and ultimately killed by Klaus Barbie, um, the SS commander. It is that the version that the French were explaining was slightly different to the version that I had read in an English language book by an English historian, which brings me to Jean Moulin, The Death of Jean Moulin, Biography of a Ghost by Patrick Marnham. Um, so Patrick Marnham is a British historian who writes about Jean Moulin through the lens of a Brit. And it's not that his version was wrong and the French version was right or vice versa. It was just that Jean Moulin is someone I feel the French write about better because they kind of understand who he is more than a Brit does. So, But it's a really good book. Nevertheless, even though it's written by a Brit, and I'm a Brit, it's a really good book about Jean Moulin. And that's the famous photo everyone knows of Jean Moulin. He always wore a scarf because he'd been uh, tortured by the Germans during the war and he had terrible scars around his neck. And so he wore a scarf. Right? That's the famous image 
So Jean Moulin, although it's one person as part of the resistance, it tells the wider story of the resistance because um, Jean Moulin was such an in incredibly influential or would have gone on to be an incredibly influential figure. And one can only wonder whether had he survived the war, whether he would have been um, involved somehow in France's government post-war and, you know, because de Gaulle obviously eventually becomes the president, but John Moulin had the charisma, he had the intelligence to, to, to go further than he did. Um, so Jean Moulin is a really fascinating figure. Think of him as, a, as, as the most iconic French figure um, in terms of resisting the Nazi occupation. But don't forget, de Gaulle, as important as he was, was in the UK kind of 1940 onwards. Okay, he was out in North Africa for torch and things like that, various points. But Jean Moulin was, was in... France for most of the uh, uh, of the occupation up until uh, when he was captured and ultimately killed. So the death of John Moulin, biography of a ghost by Patrick Marnham. And the next book is also by Patrick Marnham, um, and it's called War in the Shadows, Resistance, Deception and Betrayal in Occupied France. Now, this is not about the whole of the French resistance. It's a, it's a tar It talks about the French resistance and also the SOE. It is about one particular network. And it reads in the cover that in, in 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 the blurb it says it reads like a Jean Le Carré, and it does read like a Jean Le Carré or a Frederick Forsyth. It's part. This book is part thriller, part history, part who done it um, mystery. It talks about the the um, the betrayal, the 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 fact we've talked about it quite often on World War Two TV. Is tragically most of the escape lines, most of the resistance networks in France and elsewhere were at some point broken by the Germans because. You know, you can't trust everybody in a wartime environment. So War in the Shadows is, if, for example, you're watching this and you predominantly read fiction, you like James Bond books, for example, and, um, you know, uh, uh, that kind of action thriller, then War in the Shadows will read like a book uh, that it, it's, it's re it reads like historical fiction, but it's real. So it's a gripping tale of, of the shadows um, in France in the occupation. So... It, it's a really, really good read. War in the Shadows, Resistance, Deception, Betrayal in Occupied France. Um, as you may know, if you're a frequent watcher of the channel, I was in the Vercors, which is the part of kind of East France, just sort of in the foothills, if you like, of the Al French Alps. And the Vercors was where, while the largest kind of open battles between the French Resistance and the Germans took place in July and early August 1944, and I was there and I did a couple of Woody's walkabouts from that area there. And um, there, there aren't that many books about um, that battle. There's a kind of an Osprey book on Vercors, which is pretty good with some good maps in it. But the better book, I actually asked the staff at the museum in the Vercors, which they thought was the best um, book on the Battle of Vercors. And they recommended the book by the late... Paddy Ashdown. So Paddy Ashdown, The Cruel Victory, The French Resistance, D-Day, and The Battle for the Vercors, 1944. Now, the D-Day bit in the title there is slightly misleading. I can imagine why the publishers put it in there, because D-Day sells books. It's not really about D-Day, but it does refer to the fact that after the liberation of Normandy began in June 1944, that is one of the events that prompts resistance cells, units, Mackie units elsewhere in France to kind of rise up. And that's ultimately what happened in the Vercors, is this plateau, high altitude plateau in the Vercors. Um, the, the French there kind of declared themselves in July, I think it was June actually, a kind of a free republic and the Germans set about quashing that by sending German mountain troops and other units in around the Vercors to attack it and eliminate. And they did. And it was a tragic event where hundreds of French resistance and innocent civilians alike were ultimately killed by the Germans. And it, it's also it wasn't the SS. It was German uh, army. So it, it busts that idea of the myth of the clean Wehrmacht. That it was the Wehrmacht who were the perpetrators of most of the horrendous crimes. Here. So it's quite a big book. Um, it's maybe 15 years old now, but Paddy Ashdown, The Cruel Victory. And if you don't know Paddy Ashdown, when he was an MP in Britain, he did lots of foreign assignment because he spoke perfect French and Italian and possibly German. I think he ended, it was like six languages he spoke. So so he he's not, although he's British, he's very much a, uh, um, was he? He was a child of the world, if you like, in that he was very much interested in other people's culture. So his own. It, it says in the introduction that the translations are his own translations of French documents and French archives. So it's, I, I, you know, appreciated his 
objectivity and and he it's a really good book um paddy ash down the cruel victory um so that's my next recommendation then moving along to some of the individuals who kind of took part in the resistance my next book um damien lewis uh the flame of the resistance american beauty french hero british spy is about josephine baker the the um black American singer, dancer, and entertainer who was in France during World War II. And Damon Lewis is probably better known for his books about the SAS, and he's been on the channel frequently. In fact, he'll be on, on Monday, Tuesday, Friday, it's next week sometime. I forgot which day it is, talking about his latest book on the SAS. But in many ways, I think this is his best book. And I think that because it's, it's his ab obvious affection for Josephine Baker comes through and she was such an extraordinary character I mean incredibly resourceful and strong and charismatic and and absolutely you know a legend in France where she was buried in the Pantheon, Pantheon in in France or buried she was been buried before but she was honored there uh, three or four years ago as you know by the highest status the French can bestow upon anybody. And she wasn't even born in France. So Josephine Baker is absolutely adored in France. And and her her role as, um, well, you'll read the book and find out. She was a spy, but she was also um, helping out with organizations trying to help Jews and help people and refugees. She was had her ear to the ground. She could move through circles other people couldn't move through because she was Josephine Baker. And the, the Germans kind of appreciated her as well. So it's a fantastic read. And if you if you want to know more, check in the the, the World War II TV um, playlists and you'll find Damien coming on talking about Josephine Baker where he and I discuss how brilliant she was. But the book is is outstanding. I think it's probably his best. Moving along another book and another guest on the channel and and yes a lot of the books i recommend are guests of the channel and there's kind of that's a catch-22 situation that i choose the best historians to come on my channel because i choose them carefully and therefore i recommend their books so so yes there it's there's it, there's sent in a sense there's a lack of object objectivity because they have it on my channel but then i have all invited them to my channel because they're good at what they do so ellen hampton is an American who lives and works in France. Again, another complete Franco Francophile. She loves the country. Um, and it's called Doctors at War. So it's about the French medical profession and how they um, actively oppose the German occupation by trying to save lives. Uh, so it's resistance in the sense of more of a humanitarian effort than actually going out blowing up trains, although that part of the resistance is kind of covered in it as well. But I found it was a really interesting way of looking at the German occupation through the ideas of, of medical practitioners who have taken an oath of, of looking after people. And, and, and in the book, there are discussions about these French resistance doctors would, of course, treat German Germans have been captured because that's their oath. That's their, that's what they have to do as medical professionals. So I like the slant that Ellen brought. So Ellen Hampton, Doctors at War, the clandestine battle against the Nazi, the, the Nazi occupation of France. So um, there we go. That's my next one. Um, just three more to go. Now, next one, um, one of the figures um, associated with Jean Moulin, well, the two of the figures associated with Jean Moulin, who I talked about earlier, were the Obracks, Raymond and Lucy Obrac, who were, uh, I guess you'd call them kind of part of the intellectual set of, of people in Lyon. One had been a teacher, one had been various other kind of um, middle and upper class jobs. And Raymond and Lucy were part of the same resistance network that Jean Moulin was part of. And this book by Sean Reese. Lucy Obrac, uh, the French resistance heroine who defied the Gestapo. It's about 20 years old. I don't know, Sean. Um, and I found it's it's an interesting book because it's a strong, a str you know, Lucy was an incredibly strong French uh, lady. Um, she didn't um, take any prisoners, metaphorically speaking. And, and, and the book talks about how over the years, because she was such a re well-regarded heroine after the war, is that her 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 views on on certain aspects, because her and her husband were kind of a, in some ways aligned to communist side of the resistance, and yet that wasn't the the the, the, the side that would got the the side the faction that got more attention afterwards, because the Gaul was a. Um, uh, right wing, uh, center center right, I suppose, and the de Gaulle government they kind of influenced how the resistance was honored and they tended to favor the de Gaullist resistance and the communist resistance were, were, were treated very, very much, very differently. 
And so Lucio Brack was someone who was absolutely trying to resist against the German occupation, but doing it through the through a particular political lens. And I found that really interesting. Um, and just it, it, one of those women or characters you read about where you admire huge aspects of the personality, but there's other bits you think, God, God, God she's stubborn. Uh, in, and you, you, you don't always agree with everything that she thinks and says. But that's, for me, what made it so interesting to read because... She she was clearly one of those people that at a, at a dinner party, she would divide the room because she would say things that some people would agree with and some people would go, how dare you say that? And she was just, she. You, I think you can see it in that photo there. She's, you know, one of those opinionated people. Um, I think I'm an opinionated person. Um, so Lucy Obrac, Sean Resistant, Sean Reese there, the French Resistant her heroine who defied the, the Gestapo. Um, next book, and we're going to, to Normandy for my last two books. So this one here is um, code name Christi, Christiane Clouet um, by Claire Chevrion. And uh, this was a woman um, who was part of the resistance network in Normandy. Um, she had a code, that was her code name. And she was involved in the official kind of meeting between the French government in exile and what was going on in France and, and London. She was also captured by the Germans and spent months in one of the uh, more notorious camps where they housed resistance. So it's not a it's not a massive book. It's quite a thin one. I don't know how easy it is to get these days. Um, so this is this is her own memoir. This is her own memoir then then translated into English. And it's I say it's one of the few books that is a French book that was translated into English. So that's that's the one I recommend. Codename Christiane Clouet, a woman in the French resistance. And um, it's it's I just found it really good. Um, and then lastly, but by no means least, the classic book in terms of understanding the French resistance in, in Normandy is um, 10,000 Eyes by Richard Collier. And Richard Collier did a very famous book about Dunkirk in, in, 19, uh, in the events of 1940 and a couple of three other. I think he might have done a Battle of Britain book as well, Richard Collier, maybe one on North Africa. But 10,000 Eyes, the amazing story of the D-Day spy net, uh, network that cracked Hitler's Atlantic Wall before D-Day. So this includes all those stories of the people who went into the German headquarters and snuck plans of defences out, you know, hidden up their sweaters and down their trousers and things like that. The Guillaume Mercadar, who cycled along the coast, a pre-war um, French Tour de France competitor who was getting plans there. So it's it it really is interesting in that regard because one of the questions we get as tour guides is, so where's the French resistance active in this part of France? And they're thinking of the French resistance in terms often of, of like I said earlier about the Vercors, those French resistance that went out and were actively taking up arms against the Germans or blowing up trains and and that kind of thing. And in Normandy, what the resistance was primarily doing was gathering information and intelligence for the forthcoming invasion. So we're talking about a discrete, very much behind the behind the scenes activity of just you know noting which German units are going through, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But without the information gathered by the French resistance, for example, the, the matron of the maternity hospital um, in the chateau at Benouville near Pegasus Bridge, who provided a huge amount of information about the defences there, was, was an important part of this network. So it's about the, um, the, the network of resistance in Normandy um, who set up or who, who prepare, helped prepare the, the, um, the allied invasion package, that information that they had to make sure the invasion was going to be successful. So 10,000 Eyes, Richard Collier, is my last recommendation. And on that note, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to just hold Charlie up so Charlie can say proper hello to everybody. Um, and there, there's little Charlie. Isn't he lovely? Um, and I'm an unashamed cat person. And he's just sitting, joining me. He watched the football with me a couple of nights ago. He watched um, Ipswich beat Bristol City. And maybe he'll be more at other time. So there we are, everybody. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for your support of the channel. That was a few book reviews. I, will, I won't be back now until after the weekend. That was the last one I'm doing, definitely. So cheers, everybody. I will see you all next time. Um, have a good weekend. Bye.